Vargas's full interview on the front page. David, when you talk about your own instincts as an entrepreneur and how you seem to have those, now some people don't have those, so I'd like you to talk about that, but also you said that instincts can be risky, mm-hmm. and how does one guard against being too risky? For me, mm-hmm. uh, instincts boils well, down to experience. Mm-hmm. We all have intuition based on experience, something that's happened to us. Um, sometimes we have an instinct that we want to move with, but it's a, a, a negative experience somewhere in us, mind, in our subconscious, mm-hmm. is telling us no. You know? <laughs> so you have to understand what uh, instincts are. Mm-hmm. They are basically something that you've experienced along the way mm-hmm. that you can't pinpoint. Right. But you feel good about it. Right, yeah. Or you feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. That's you know, true. You know, something tells me not to cross the street just yet. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, even though the yellow light is there, I can run, but something says don't. <laughs> yes. You yeah. know, okay? Yeah. So instincts are good, mm-hmm. but they can only carry you so far. Okay? And, <clears throat> and they're risky, mm-hmm. as I said. It's an instinct, and it's you, and, and, and in, in what you're feeling has never been tested, really, so to speak. For you, you've never, yeah, never, right, you've right. never done it. Mm-hmm. So, but you can say, I can do it, mm-hmm. you know. And you have to be careful. Um, I, for me, instinct is because I'm much older, and I, I, I've been around a lot, uh, and I've, I've, I've seen some great entrepreneurs succeed, mm-hmm. uh, and I've seen some great ones not succeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for me, it's, I, I work on my experience when I feel something. Where did that come from? And I try to analyze that and turn it on. And then I do research if I can, just to back it up. Exactly. I, I go out and I look. Internet, Google is fantastic for me to find something. Right. I just have to learn how to phrase it. You know, once I find the, the, the formula on how to phrase a search, you can get just about anything you want. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I, I go to universities. Mm-hmm. Uh, I go to the Warren School of Business. They have some lectures up there. I go to. Um, if I'm trying to figure out something on marketing and mm-hmm. I feel good about a marketing piece, mm-hmm. I go there to make sure that I touched all the steps in marketing. Yeah. Do the research, the proper research for my clients. Mm-hmm. You know, and help my clients understand why I'm doing what I'm doing for them. Uh-huh. You know? So that instinct becomes more of strategy mm-hmm. than just an instinct. And that's how I got against that. Right. You know, so. yeah. And you were, when you were talking about the apple pie and you have to go out the blueberry pie and the muffins and the donuts, uh, I'd like you to address a little bit having multiple streams of income to fall back on and I think you call it product differentiators. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Tell us about that. The Vargas Group started out with web development. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we expanded on web development. And that technology changes all the time. Yeah. Um, so we started out with a web development, um, and, and then um, we got into um, the family business mm-hmm. side, because mm-hmm. I was doing consulting. Mm-hmm. And getting to know customers, I, once I started, I, I realized that they needed more help than just the web development. You know, because mm-hmm. I had to find out what were they doing on the brick and mortar side in the businesses the customers were coming to the door. And how does that match? Is your message the same mm-hmm. right. between the two environments? Very good. So I had to find out more about the customer. Mm-hmm. And as I found out more about the customer, I found out their issues that they were having inside the business. Um, and, and it had to do with employees. Mm-hmm. They were blaming the employees. And we, I love this. My wife said, is it the employees? Because when I do family therapy, it's generally never the kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, the yeah. parents need a little bit of adjustment, too. Yes. And, and, and I come to find out that that's true mm-hmm. a lot of the times. It has to work both, both yeah. ways. Yeah. The, the owners and so we, we have the consulting service mm-hmm. uh, and the family business therapy for me right after that. Yeah. And then um, as that, as the 2000 and I'd say probably around 2008, 
the business has started pulling back on a lot of spending. Uh huh. Yeah. And but I knew that they still needed. Yeah, absolutely. And they fit. You 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 more them to fit mm-hmm. with everything that you have, and I think that's the key to it. Yeah. And my father, I still thought father was like, that's probably why I get that wrong. My father was a painter. Became a carpenter, a plumber, an electrician. Anything he wants, he wants to. He would go out and play. And they were no schools around, so I was like, I was like, that means you're going to have to play. He said, plumbing companies want to sell me plumbing supplies. Yeah. I'm going to say how to do this. I need to do this and I have this. And they would give me all the information. Smart. Um, they would give me directions and instructions and diagrams. My father was very, very smart. And, and he grew his business. And so, Yes, he learned on their dime like he learned from corporate America, so I'm very good. Something else he mentioned about um, websites and that how technology changes every 15 minutes Mm -hmm. these days. um, Websites have become much more interactive, which I think is one thing Mm -hmm. business owners have absolutely got to keep up with and the information that keeps people coming back to those. Tell me about that. we're at, um, well, there's different technologies that, yeah. that they develop to us. The most, that's been around, the one that's been around the longest, I think, is in HTML mm-hmm. uh, coding. Mm-hmm. Um, in the early days, that was sitting down and doing the code to point to pictures. Right. You pull the pictures <laughs> and you have to adjust them. So, and that was very, very glorious. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> then came PHP. SQL, MySQL, all those, and then um, and, uh, and what you call it, JavaScript, mm-hmm. and, and Perl, mm-hmm. and, 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 and it meant it, it, uh, years ago it was uh, Pascal yes. for, <laughs> for IBM and all that. So there's always been some kind of code. Since technology computers came around, mm-hmm. there's always been some type of code to manipulate the hard drive and, and the components, software that's on the on, on, on mm-hmm. hard drive. Today, what we're doing is, it's, it's gone even further than that. It's, you have to have websites that respond to different devices. Right. You, know, you have to have those websites to, to respond to different mm-hmm. devices. Mm-hmm. And the experience has to be pleasant. <laughs> you know, for the yeah. user. Right, exactly. The user. When they exactly. go from one to the other, they... They understand what to do. In the beginning, it was when re- it's called responsive design mm-hmm. or responsive coding. In the beginning, when they first came out, people, oh, we have to learn another one, you know. <laughs> but it's taken off. It's yeah, really, sure. you know, it's really taken off, and they see the need for it. Mm-hmm. And so, what in the beginning, people didn't know what to experience. You know, they didn't know how to bring the experience to the consumer. Right. You know. And they just started putting it together and putting it out there, and people were just confused. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what it looks like on the laptop, and this doesn't look at all. So they had to get together and come up with a plan to make it user friendly mm-hmm. and give the consumer an experience that's similar to the desktop, but as far as clicking from page right, to right, page, right. buying stuff. Now, mm-hmm. in the beginning, websites came out were very, you, you didn't buy too much on the internet. Amazon, when Amazon was launched, it said it was making $400 million a year. You know, when Amazon got in. And that was what it was making, but it was still in the red. You know? <laughs> it's still in the red now, but it's making billions of dollars a year now. And I remember people saying it'll never get, you know, right, it'll never catch on. Right. It'll never catch on. And, and this is what, what happens with technology. It's, it's each generation finds out what they want, learns what they want, and the developers do know what they Mm-hmm. Smartphone experiences are mostly a, a, the core demographics for sending them to getting them to come to your website to buy stuff. Mm-hmm. The core demographic is, is, is uh, 18 to, uh, let's say, 49, 48, 49, but that's shrinking. We're getting people on the other side of that spectrum. And it's anybody, you know, people mm-hmm. that are in their 60s or 70s that feel comfortable. No, 80s. Right. I don't have to go to the store anymore. <laughs> I can go to Amazon and buy anything. Yeah. Yeah. Anything I want. Food, anything mm-hmm. I want, I can get it online. It will be delivered to my door for a charge. Right. So the, the, the design has to be flexible enough for all 
all those jingles for all the consumers. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And I just find that um, we have, a, you know, a lot. You know, Amazon wants to deliver by, uh, what do you call it, drones? Yes, yeah, right. Like <laughs> yes. You know, I can see that now. So <laughs> right. Calling the police. There's too much noise outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, it's, um, I just think that uh, it's, it's the experience for the consumer that's going to drive it. Mm -hmm. the consumer, exactly. The consumer is going to drive yes, exactly. it. And you have to give them what they want. Yeah. And it's not necessarily a lot of information. Mm -hmm. People don't have time. The click-through rate is five oh, seconds. Yeah. yeah. They get to a page and yeah, they want to see right away. Right away. Yeah. And and they're on to someone else. Right, exactly. Unless it's, of course, universities mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh, manufacturing, mm -hmm. manufacturing like uh, GE. Mm -hmm. They have yes. a lot of information for their suppliers. Mm -hmm. So you have to put that information out there for them. <clears throat> and it's helped you, tr unfortunately, um, shrink your labor force. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So it, it's. Oh, I remember web developers were in hot demand. Yeah. Right. Right. And not not today. so much anymore. Right? Not today. And so technology has its own. It's the same thing sure. with radio and television, as mm -hmm. I told you earlier. Yeah. I right. just found that you know we sold a lot of manufacturing to overseas. Yeah. Right. And we don't do we do very little home entertainment manufacturing right. TVs. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like that, so. yeah. Yeah, it keeps you being creative, doesn't it? <laughs> and you have to stay. You have to stay awake. <laughs> yes. You have to. You know, you can't say "woe is me." Yes, right. You know, yeah. Pay attention. <laughs> yeah, you have to find out who, what, what's new, what's innovative. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> always looking for an opportunity. Right. Exactly. Just look for an opportunity. And it feels good to you. Explore it and see how it fits in your business. How do you sell that product or service to your consumer? Thank you so much, David. Great advice for our viewers. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. And again, thank you for dropping by the GBDN TV. This blog, and be sure to watch David's full interview on the front page. And if you haven't signed up for our directory yet, please be sure to do that. Until next